Hello, so welcome back to another episode to Introduction to Machine Learning in Python. Um, just a couple of things. Christmas is gone. Uh, the mini ice age we had in the UK is pretty much surpassed. And we've got the new year coming up. So hopefully we're going to try and push some more machine learning videos out and learn some new stuff before New Year's. And uh, yeah. So today, um, in this episode, we're going to be focusing on pickling. So how to pickle data. It's fairly simple and it's some concept that's quite neglected. Uh, I, I think in machine in in Python because when I was learning Python, no one really taught me it. So, yeah, I kind of learned it outside of that. Now, yeah, another thing: this camera is a very old camera, so this pixelation might get quite bad because of the camera quality. But it's the best I've got right now. So yeah, okay. So let's just jump into actual coding then, shall we? So we're back in the piece of code that we've been working on from the previous episode and we've actually done forecasting, we've actually managed to draw out a graph of sorts and we're just going to be focusing on pickling. When you have machine learning you have um, the model. So the model is generally the brains behind the, the machine learning model, it's, just, it's where all the numbers have been passed through and the corresponding values to manipulate the graph or manip manipulate values is where that occurs. So in this case, because we're doing linear regression, our classifier is the brains here, so the main model that we want to store and save. So what we can do is pickle the, the classifier and then we'll store that into a file and then if we wanted to go to a different system with different data, we can then just pop that in, populate the classifier on that machine with, a f with that pickled file and we will have the same model there as well. So it's quite a useful thing if you're running huge amounts of data against a classifier. And so <clears throat> let's just jump into code and we'll talk more about it later. So we're going to do something like import pickle and then let's go to the part where we actually uh, train our classifier. So here is the classifier and we're actually training it here and this is if you had huge amounts of data this is where the the main holdup of your program would be, where it would take the longest. So let's just say with open, and then we're going to give it a path. So we're going to say here uh, pickled underscore clf dot pickle, and that will be our file. And then we're going to give it a mode, and then we're going to say I want to write byte plus. Now plus is usually denoted for if the file doesn't exist create one and it's usually linked with append but I found that adding plus just guarantees a safe um, way of making a file. For me anyway. As file and then we're going to say pickle dot dump and then we're going to say the classifier and then we're going to say the file we're dumping it to so that's file in this case. And then just to show you it works, let's say clf equals none. And then we want to open the, f the file up and populate that data back into our classifier. So we're going to say with open it again. And then we're going to specify the path to the file so that we, um, let's just copy and paste it quicker. Uh, we'll copy and paste this whole chunk. And then instead of saying write byte, we're going to say read byte as file. And then we're going to say pickle dot load file and then that's going to equal to our classifier and just to show you what we need what it looks like we're going to print the classifier out <clears throat> okay so let's debug this so it will get to this line okay cool we're there so because our data set's quite small, uh, I don't believe it took so long there to uh, fit our data. So if we go here, we can see that the file has been saved. Um, and then here we, we're saying that our, our CLF equals none. So you can see how it says CLF none. And so if we go into that, you can see our classifier has been populated there. So let's just stop here and run all the way. 
and it should produce us a graph that looks like that. Yeah, cool. So if you remember the previous episode, we generated a graph, and that was the same data. So yeah, uh, pickling's pretty useful in that way. Um, you can get really, really huge um, models. So when we go into like deep learning and neural networks, it's quite useful there. But uh, yeah, it's quite useful in case you don't want to save your data to a file. So generally, what I've been doing is I've I get the data, I then save it as a string into a file, as a TXT file. So something like um, saving files that have or saving folder names for projects that I have completed. So let's say some of the automation stuff I've done with my YouTube generation stuff. I've been getting uh, the uh, the ID codes for certain videos and populating them into text files. So by doing pickling, you don't really have to focus on that. All you have to do is just serialize your object, you're then saving it to a file, and then you populate it back up, which is quite useful. It saves a lot of the faff, the faff of having to open the file, split the string, take it apart, make a function, make a, make a, whatever. It, it, it's just much easier. Okay, cool. So that covers this video. I don't want to make this too long. Um, and we'll cover something new tomorrow. We'll try leaving off this and we'll go into more regression based topics. Like more of the pure regression as opposed to like using these um, using these type of functions. We'll try and make it more from scratch. Okay, well, remember to like, subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.